Hey guys, so today we're talking about tunnels. In this chapter, we'll be talking about the purpose of, of tunneling, tunneling methods and then tunnels lining. Okay, tunnels are used for mainly roads and rail transportation, but there are various different things that it is used for. Generally, it is split up into three types, mining, public works, and transportation. But it can also be used for different things like drainage. Over here, you can see uh, in Hong Kong, where they actually have a lot of rainfall, where they have these different catchment areas, these little different catchment areas, flowing into different tunnels, and that water gets into the ocean. Imagine having a country where you have so much water, you can have rainwater just flowing into the ocean. South Africa has a need of rainwater and over there they can just do that. Okay, then you go into hydro conduits. It is basically a method of conducting electricity. That's another method, another thing they do use tunnels for. So tunneling methods depend on the ground type and conditions, the length of the tunnel, the expertise available, the type of the tunnel you require, the economics available, and then also the rock stability. So definitions that you would need to know for this chapter uh, is heading, which is basically the work face where the tunnel activities are occurring, where you are working. Then you get lining, which is the material used to complete the face. So steel or concrete or whatever you are using on there. Then you get pipe jacking, which is a method used to install pipes into the soil. Then the full face, that's basically you talking about the entire area of the heading. And then the conventional shield, which is a steel casting used to protect the heading. So there are six main tunneling methods. There are a few more that I'm also going to method uh, mention, but the six main ones are drilling and blasting, tunnel boring machines, tunneling, tunneling with sh uh, shields, pipe jacking, freezing methods, and immersed tubes. So let's get into drilling and blasting. It is used when excavating in rock. The diameter of the tunnel is too small for large excavating machines and it is in short lengths of the tunnel that's mainly when you use drilling and blasting there are several techniques available uh, advanced heading without support advanced heading in segments followed by full face support and then heading in segments followed by progressive support read up more about this on page 159 to 160 so drilling and blasting works as follows. A number of holes are drilled into rock, which then you put explosives into. That is de detonated and the length of the tunnel obviously gets longer. That rubble is removed and the tunnel gets reinforced in one of those three methods I just said. So the three methods, you get a full face heading without support. So that is basically just drilling and blasting without ever supporting your whole tunnel because the rock is very stable. Then maybe your rock isn't too stable. Then you do advanced heading in segments followed by full face, full face support. So the segments you have to remember, you basically blast in different pieces of or segments of the tunnel. And then just after that, you get full face support. So the face is supported completely after the blast. And then after that, the other method you get when the soil really isn't stable at all, you get heading in segments followed by progressive support. So what would happen here is you would maybe dig a long tunnel over here, dig a little bit out here. So you'd come through here, dig out there, dig out there, dig out here dig out here and then dig out number six. This picture actually explains it a little bit better. And then support it progressively as you start digging out pieces of it. And then you continue. That's a picture of how they did it, the, the Gau train tunnel, part of it. So they drilled the parts in there and then they put the 
explosives in there and then they start going forwards. Then you can also excavate a tunnel going vertically, like you can see over here. It's the same concept. You drill a couple of holes, put blasting in there, remove the rubble. Okay, then we talk about the second method, the method that is widely used in the world at the moment. Uh, it is the tunnel boring machines or TBM. If you have not watched videos on this, please do. It is quite interesting. Watch on YouTube. There is quite a few things that I have built with this that is very interesting. Fairly, it is fairly sophisticated machinery and it basically started existing because of the need in technological development and the need of the economical side of things. You needed to do it a little bit cheaper. It is employed in longer tunnels. It has its limitations though. So when the nature of the ground is likely to change frequently, like from soft to hard, it doesn't work that well. And it confined spaces doesn't work so well for it either. So previous use of TBM in South Africa, Durban Harbor, they have used it there in their undersea tunnel. It's a diameter of 4.4 meters. Uh, it's 35 meters below sea level, nine meters below sea bed. It started in 2005 and was completed in June 2007, and it is 515 meters long. That's the one. And then the Lesotho Highlands Water Project, they had six TBMs over there to drill three tunnels. Uh, and they had an internal diameter of four and five meters of a length between 32 kilometers and 45 kilometers. Okay, then you get tunneling with shields. So tunneling with shields is a protective structure. Uh, the tunnels go through soil that is too soft and this temporarily supports the structure. Then you get pipe jacking, which is basically a hydraulic jack used to push specially made pipes through the ground behind the TBM to create tunnels under existing structures, usually. Then you get freezing. It's called freezing. It isn't freezing as you know it, like in a refrigerator. It's more of freezing in the sense of keeping everything as it is. So this method is used on unstable soil a freezing material around the excavation area and thereafter any conventional tunneling method can be used. Then the sixth method we're talking about, I said it's the last method that they mentioned in the book, but I'm also going to mention a couple of other ones. An immersed tube method is a kind of underwater tunnel constructed using segments built elsewhere. Okay, so then you also get modern and non-TVM methods. You get, not everyone can have a massive machine for tunneling. Sometimes you just want a small tunnel or want to do it by hand. We'll talk about when you need to build by hand and why you need to build by hand sometimes in a later chapter. I think it's the last chapter for this class. Uh, first, you get the sprayed concrete method. You can read up a little bit further on that. You also get the rock bolting method where you physically rock, bolt the rocks into its position. And then you also get stiffening ribs and liner plates and full lining. As you can see again, that is what they used in other parts of the Gautrein. The last part we're talking about is support systems and lining. And that is on page 163 to 164. There's a little bit more detail on that. Segmental forms can be used in situ reinforced concrete can be used and then masonry as well okay guys that's it it's actually quite an easy chapter not too much in there just a few little details do watch a couple of videos on it because it is quite interesting